Hey everyone, let's get started with your dealer training course. And when you finish this course, you will be qualified to apply for an Ohio used motor vehicle dealer license. So let's go ahead and get started here. I wanna give you some really valuable and updated contact information for the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles, that's the BMV. And throughout the course, you're gonna hear me say, BMV wants you to do this, or BMV doesn't want you to do that. So when I'm saying BMV, I am referring to the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Now the BMV has the dealer and salesperson's licensing section in Columbus. And these are full-time staff and they work for the state of Ohio. And their full-time job is basically to help us operate our business, to help us maintain compliance. And they're also going to process your initial dealer license application. And I'm going to cover that whole process with you here in just a little bit. So uh, when you're mailing that application to the state, you're going to mail it to P.O. Box 16521, Columbus, Ohio, 43216-6521. And I'll give you that address and a big long checklist later on of exactly what you're going to be putting into that envelope. You can also call the dealer licensing section at 614-752-7636. Once again, at 614-752-7636. They are an encyclopedia of knowledge in this industry. So definitely consider using those resources. You can also drop an email to the dealer licensing section. We have a special email address set up just for us. It's DPS Dealer Support at dps.ohio.gov. And I'm going to take you to their official website here in just a little while. It's autodealers.ohio.gov. So I'm going to show you how basically you can order titles, replacement dealer plates. You can really run your business from that website. So I'm going to take you on that website several times throughout this course. Uh, and always ensure, I want to ensure that you stay in contact with the dealer licensing section. If you ever have any questions, like I said, they are a wealth of help for us. And they're also going to help you maintain Compliance and the compliance is a word that I'm going to use a lot through this course. Compliance means we're following every rule, law, and guideline. And when you maintain 100% compliance with your new business, you're going to maintain 100% profits. I'm going to really explain that uh, throughout the course today. So, in unit one of your dealer training course, I'm going to show you all the steps that are necessary to obtain an Ohio used motor vehicle dealer's license. Now, I want to remind you, we need to complete these steps and then we will apply for our dealer's license. And I'm going to go into all of these extensively with you here throughout the course. So in order to get a dealer's license, we're going to cover completing the dealer application. We're going to do that here in just a little bit. There's a six page application to complete and you want to ensure that you are completing it correctly and in its entirety. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on that here in just a little bit to make sure that you are filling out your dealer license application correctly. So you'll be able to get your license approved as soon as possible and you'll be able to start your business as soon as possible. I'm going to talk about your electronic fingerprinting requirement. We're going to talk about the building and display lot requirements. We're also going to talk about your mandatory dealer surety bond. I'm going to show you how to submit photographs to the state and you will need to have a sign. We're going to maintain hours and records and a net worth. I'm also going to show you in this unit how to easily obtain your vendor license number. We're going to talk about how to register your business with the Ohio Secretary of State's office. We're going to talk about the I-9 employment eligibility forms that will need to be completed by each person on the license and each future employee. I'm going to show you how to easily get your federal employment number. We'll talk about your required dealer course that you're taking right now and then your mandatory lot inspection. So what we're going to do here in just a little bit, I'm going to show you how to complete a dealer application. Obviously, if you want to apply for a dealer's license and get your dealer's license, then you're going to have to complete a dealer application, and that is Form 4320. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a little bit. There are some mistakes that can easily be made on that application. So we are going to spend some extensive time here in just a moment, and we're going to go through every single space on that document. It's six pages long, so I'm going to show you how to fill that out correctly. So here in just a little bit, you will have already completed that step because we're going to complete that step here in just a little bit. 
And you can always download all the forms that we'll, we're talking about in the course at autodealers.ohio.gov. That's that official dealer licensing section website. I'm going to jump on there with you several times during the course to show you how to download all these forms that we're going to be submitting to the state and some of the forms that we'll use later on as well. So we'll complete that dealer application together here in just a little bit. I'm also going to let you know here very soon, you are going to be handling very large, very significant financial transactions. When you sell motor vehicles, some of these transactions are going to be worth you know, several thousands of dollars. Some of the vehicles you sell will be worth several thousands of dollars. And you're going to have complete oversight over every single transaction. So the state is basically giving you oversight over very large financial transactions. But before the state gives you your dealer's license to have oversight over these transactions, the state wants to make sure that you're of a high level of ethical standards. They want to make sure they're not giving a dealer's license to someone that stole a car or rolled back odometers. You know, they do require us to be of a higher level of ethical standards than the average person that's walking down the street. So we are going to be having oversight over these large financial transactions. And you know what? The state also wants to make sure they're not giving a dealer's license to somebody that was managing some auto theft ring. So we're going to need to get our fingerprints taken care of. And when you do this, it's basically going to run your automated background check. OK, so you probably live within five minutes of a location to get your fingerprints taken care of. You can go to your favorite search engine, uh, type in Ohio fingerprint locations, and you're going to see them all over the state. Or you can even go to the Ohio Attorney General's office at ohioattorneygeneral.gov and type in your zip code there. And like I said, you probably live within five minutes of a location to get your fingerprints obtained. Now, when you're getting your fingerprints, you're not going to get your ink all over your fingers. You're basically going to lay your fingers onto a glass panel. And the tech that is taking your fingerprints will ask you the question, do you want BCI or FBI or both? Well, for a dealer's license, we just need BCI. OK, so that's the state's Bureau of Criminal Investigations background check. Don't pay the additional FBI fee. We don't need that. We only need the BCI check for a, a dealer's license. And that tech is also going to ask you, where do you want your results? So you'll need to instruct them that they need to direct copy BMV dealer licensing. So make sure and tell the tech to direct copy BMV dealer licensing. And in that way, your electronic fingerprints will be submitted electronically to the BMV. And if you do live in another state, then instead of doing that, you'll need to request what's known as a fingerprint card from the dealer licensing section. And then you would have to go get fingerprints in your home state. But if you live in the state of Ohio, you'll do your fingerprints at any a local office that allows you to do that. So get that taken care of, get the BCI and have them direct copy BMV dealer licensing. In order to have an Ohio dealer's license, you must have a business building. So the state basically wants your license to be located at a building. So you are going to need to have a building to have your dealer's license. Your building must be zoned for a dealership. So you have to meet all local zoning requirements. And how do you find out zoning requirements for the building that you want to use for your dealer's license? Well, you can easily contact maybe your city hall or your county. And normally you can ask for planning and zoning and ask if the building that you want to use can be used as a dealership. And they'll usually be able to type the address of your building into a database and tell you zoning for that building and whether or not you can have a dealership at that location. This is one of the first steps that you want to complete when you're getting ready to choose a building to use for your dealership. Because I have literally talked to dealers in the state that purchased a building to get a dealer's license. And when they called their city, the city said they couldn't have a dealership at that location. So you have to make sure that your business building meets all local zoning requirements. The state requires that your building has at least a 180 square foot office inside. 
So somewhere in your building, you have to have at least a 180 square foot office, or you can have a larger office, but you cannot have a smaller office. And a technicality on this wants to ensure that that office has walls that go from the floor to the ceiling. Okay, so this is a requirement. Even if you own a repair shop, you know, they want to make sure that you have an office that is just for the dealership. So you have to have 180 square foot office for the dealership. And I also want you to be aware that state law requires that your office has a minimum of one desk, at least three chairs, and one filing cabinet. I want to repeat that. Your office has to have at least one desk, at least three chairs, and at least one filing cabinet. And when we start our paper trail here in just a little while, you're going to realize why you're going to need that filing cabinet because we're going to be filling out a lot of paperwork on every transaction. And I'm going to cover that paperwork with you extensively during your dealer training course. The state also requires that the office has adequate lighting, electrical service, permanent heating, and ventilation. Okay, so this is a requirement. You have to have it adequate lighting, electrical service, permanent heating, and ventilation. They want to make sure that your office is a real safe area that is conducive for doing motor vehicle transactions. The BMV doesn't want you filling out titles next to some car up on some jack in a garage, okay? So they want to make sure that when you're doing motor vehicle transaction paperwork, that you're doing it in your office in that safe retail environment. You know, they don't want electrical cables hanging out the roof or something like that. It's got to be a safe area for you and your customers. The state also requires that on the front of this building that you post your hours of operation and your phone number. So we have to post our hours of operation and our phone number so our customers will always know when we're accessible, whether our customers have a question about a vehicle they want to purchase from you, or maybe they've got a question about a vehicle they have already purchased from you, you have to be accessible. So that's why we're going to post our hours of operation and our phone number. Now our phone number has to be answered in the dealership name. And there's two different types of official phones that you can have. If you want to, you can have that landline that goes right into your office, but they did change the law a couple of years ago. And you can either have that landline telephone or you can use a cell phone as your official dealership phone. Now, if you are using that cell phone in your pocket as your official dealership phone, the state law requires no matter what phone that you're using that you must answer that phone in the dealership name. So even if you're using your personal cell phone from here on out, you're answering that phone in the dealership name. So make sure your business building has an office with at least 180 square feet. Make sure you have at least one desk, at least three chairs and a filing cabinet. Make sure you have adequate lighting electrical service and permanent heating and ventilation in your office and make sure that you do post your hours of operation and your phone number on the front of your business building. Your display lot. You must have a display lot to show the vehicles that you're selling and your display lot must be the same address as your building. You must have at least a 3,500 square foot lot and the lot that you have can be either on the exterior of the building or the interior of the building or a combination of both. So say for example, you might have 1,000 square feet inside the building and 2,500 square feet on the outside of the building. That would meet the minimum square foot requirement. The state wants to make sure your customer parking has permanent physical separation from any customer parking or a neighboring business's customer parking as well. The BMV does not want a neighboring business's customers accidentally parking on your display lot, and then someone comes along thinking that vehicle is for sale. Well, this is confusion the BMV wants to make sure that you avoid. So you must have permanent physical separation between your lot and any other customer parking. So what is permanent physical separation? Physical separation could be curbing, landscaping, wood, metal support cable. Uh, you could also have, you know, something that just delineates basically your parking from any other customer parking. The BMV also wants to make sure that you keep your retail vehicles separate from your wholesale. So your retail vehicles are the vehicles that you have prepped and ready to sell to retail customers on your lot. And wholesale vehicles could be a vehicle maybe that you've taken on trade and that you're just going to sell at the dealer auction. Also, it's very important to know all of your retail sales activity must take place only on your lot. 
So what do I mean by this? Right now, you probably do not have a dealer's license, so you can take your car, put a for sale sign on it, park it in the Walmart parking lot next to the road, you know, until the Walmart manager runs you off or whatever. But when you have a dealer's license, all your sales activity must take place on your lot. So let's just say your lot is on the north side of Columbus and you have someone that found your vehicle online and they ask you to bring it to downtown Columbus to show it. Well, you can never do that. That is known as off-site sales activity, which is a violation of the law. So you will have to explain to some of your customers that the state does not allow that. So they will have to come to the lot to view the vehicle. Now, how do we stay compliant with that law when we're handling internet transactions? Because many of us will be selling all of our vehicles online. Well, let me explain how to comply with the law. Let's say for example, you have a lady from Dallas, Texas that has found a truck you have for sale on Craigslist and she wants to buy it. And that's fine. You're just going to need to mail her all the paperwork that I'll show you here in a moment. And she's, she's going to mail back the paperwork plus the payment for the vehicle. And that shows the vehicle was sold on site. Then after that, you can ship or deliver the vehicle to the lady in Dallas as long as you can prove the paperwork was completed and payment was received before shipping or delivering the vehicle. What you could not do is say, for example, meet this woman at a truck stop in Oklahoma City, complete the paperwork there and take the payment there. That would be an illegal offsite transaction. So it is imperative that you comply with this law. Offsite sales activity is never ever allowed. Our next requirement in order to get a dealer's license is to obtain a $25,000 dealer surety bond. Now, is a $25,000 dealer surety bond going to cost you $25,000? No. It's based on your credit score. And if you have good credit, you should be able to get a $25,000 dealer surety bond for about $100 to $200, maybe $300 a year. If you do have a couple of blemishes on your credit score, the price of your dealer surety bond can go up dramatically. But we're required to hold a dealer surety bond to ensure that we operate our new business with the very highest levels of ethical standards. I want to give you an example of where a dealer surety bond could come into the play of your dealership. So as an example, let's just say some old school unethical guy was able to get through the background check fingerprints and let's say he was able to get a dealer's license. And let's say this old school unethical guy was sold three cars with defective transmissions and did not disclose those defective transmissions to the customers. Well, this dealer has broken multiple state and federal laws. You cannot def sell defective vehicles to your customers. You would have to let the customer know about those defects in writing. So if you know any mechanical defects on a vehicle, I want to make sure that you do disclose that in writing. And I'll show you a form you can do that on here in a little bit. But let's just say, for example, this old school unethical dealer sold these three cars with defective transmissions without disclosing that information to the customer. Well, within a day or so, those customers are going to realize that they've been duped. They're going to hire an attorney and they're going to sue the dealer and uh, more than likely win their case. Well, you know, if you are ever convicted of fraudulent sales activity, you can certainly get your dealer's license revoked. So let's just say this dealer has sold these three defective vehicles without disclosing the bad transmissions. They get their dealer's license revoked. They're broke. They have no lot. They're bankrupt. They don't have a penny to their name. How do these previous customers seek financial recourse when the dealer has no license and that dealer is broke? Well, no matter how broke the dealer is, previous customers can get a $25,000 claim on the dealer surety bond. So it basically protects our customers. I want to give you a little bit of advice here. If I can give you one great recommendation in this course is to ensure that you always operate your business with the very highest level of ethical standards. Before a customer is taking a test drive, let them know, for example, hey, this car is pulling to the left a little bit. Uh, heard a little bit of noise in the rear end the other day. You know, I want to make sure that you're aware there's a dent here on the back left fender. Make sure and disclose everything you possibly know to that customer before the test drive. And when you do this, you will see some magical things happen with your dealership. You're going to see a lot of repeat business. You're going to see 
families that will only purchase vehicles from you. You're going to get great reviews online. And you're actually going to see a lot higher profits because a customer is going to trust a lot more of an investment with you, the honest ethical dealer, than they do that crooked dealer down the street just lying to everyone that comes in the door. So it is definitely a win-win situation. You're going to get a lot of repeat business. Your profits are going to be higher. And nobody's ever going to sue your dealer surety bond because you did not disclose the that defective transmission. Okay, <clears throat> so where do you get a dealer surety bond? Well, you can get one from a bonding company or an insurance agent, okay? And like I said, it is going to be based on your credit score. But one thing I want you to be aware of, <clears throat> all the paperwork that we're completing to get your dealer's license is going to be submitted to the dealer licensing section in Columbus with the exception of your original dealer surety bond. So your original dealer surety bond must be mailed to the Attorney General Con Consumer Protection Office uh, section, I'm sorry, that's going to be 30 East Broad, 14th floor, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Now, I'm going to give you that address again. Later on, at the very end of the course, I'm going to give you a little guide that you're going to go down to, uh, and it's going to show you exactly what documents go where. It's a checklist for you that you'll be able to know exactly what documents are going into the envelope that you're mailing to the dealer licensing section, and then we'll also submit our original bond to the Attorney General's office. So I'll give you that checklist uh, later on in the course. Business sign. State law requires that your building is identified as a dealership. So you're going to have to have a permanent sign produced, which you can do for a minimal cost at any printing company or any sign company. There's one catch to your sign. It has to have your entire registered dealership name in at least six inches high or larger letters. I want to repeat that. Your sign must have your entire registered dealership name in at least six inches high letters or larger. So what do we mean by your registered name? I'm going to talk about Secretary of State Corporation filings and things like that here in a little bit. And let's just say, for example, that your dealership name is Ohio Motors LLC doing business as Columbus Car Sales. Well, then your entire sign has to say Ohio Motors LLC doing business as Columbus Car Sales. So you have to have your entire registered business name in at least six inches high or larger letters on that permanent business sign. The state does allow also, you know, laminate letters to be placed on a window or something like that. They just want to make sure that they're not easily removable. So make sure and get a sign produced. You're going to have to mount that on the building and you do have to have that permanent sign with your dealership name at least six inches high or larger in letters. Next, the state wants to know what your dealership looks like. So you're going to submit photographs with your application. Okay, and I want to read those photographs to you and then I'll tell you how to submit them correctly. We are going to submit photographs of our display lot. We're going to have to show the physical barrier between our business or in, you know the physical separation of the lot. We have to show the inside and outside of the office. You have to take a picture of your sign that has your entire registered business name. You have to take a picture of your posted business hours. You're also going to take a picture of your posted phone number. And then the state wants you to step across the street and take a picture of your entire business from across the street. So if you want to, you can print up all these photographs and you can stick them right into that envelope that you are mailing to the dealer licensing section. Or you can actually email your photos to de dealerphotos at dps.oh.gov. And that's a special email address for you if you want to submit your photographs via email. If you do email your photographs, the state requires that you put your dealership name and the county that your dealership is in in the subject line of that email. I want to repeat that. If you're emailing your photographs to the BMV, make sure that you put your dealership name and the county that your dealership is in in the subject line. Otherwise, you know, the BMV gets, you know, hundreds if not thousands of emails every day and they won't be able to find yours. So don't forget your photographs, everyone. It is part of the dealer licensing requirement. So the BMV does want to know what your dealership looks like. I want to talk next about your hours requirements. Every used motor vehicle dealer in the state of Ohio is required to be open at least five hours per week. I want to repeat that. 
Every licensed motor vehicle dealer in the state of Ohio is required to be open at least five hours per week. At least two of those hours have to be between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. from Monday through Friday. Once again, you got to be open at least five hours per week with at least two of those hours between 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 p.m. from Monday through Friday with the rest of the hours being your choice. Now, you have to post your hours on the front of the building and you must staff the dealership during your posted hours. Now, the dealership can only be staffed by an owner, partner, or maybe a licensed salesperson. You can't just leave a dealership staffed by like a mechanic so you can go to the auction for a few hours unless that mechanic has a salesperson's license. So remember, you got to be open at least five days. Two of those hours must be between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The dealership must be staffed either by an owner, partner, or a licensed salesperson. And if you ever change your hours, you must notify the BMV within 15 days, and you'll also need to change the hours that are posted on the front of the building. Records. Document, document, document everything that comes across your desk. So we are going to be starting a great big paper trail with your new business. You're going to basically have to have a copy machine or a scanner with your new dealership. And the reason for this, everything has to be documented. So if you've got a piece of paper that relates to the operation of your dealership, well, you don't want to throw it away. You're going to make a copy of it. The state law requires all dealer records are kept a minimum of three years. Here in just a little bit, I'm going to show you odometer disclosure statements. I'm going to show you electronic title applications. And along with the federal forms we talk about later on, those must be kept for five years. So you're never going to throw anything away again. So we've got a whole section here in just a little bit. I'm going to go right down the list of all of your records. So by having an Ohio dealer's license, you are going to be starting an extensive paper trail. You're never going to throw anything away. And I'm going to go down that list here in just a little while and show you exactly what records you'll be maintaining at your dealership. Net worth. When you apply for your license, I'm going to show you here on the dealer license application here in a little bit, you'll have to designate whether or not the business is worth at least $75,000. So the business that you're opening must be worth at least $75,000. Now, how can the business that we're getting ready to open be worth $75,000 before we even open it? Well, the state wants to make sure that the business is worth at least $75,000. So what that means, if you are the only person whose name appears on the dealer's license, then you must be worth at least $75,000 at the time of the application. Now, let's say, for example, you have a couple of partners on the license. Well, in that case, maybe you're worth $50,000 and the other person on the license could be worth $25,000 as long as each partner's total net worth is at least $75,000. See how that works? Now, maybe you're going to have three persons on the license. Well, let's just say, for example, each person on the license is worth at least $25,000. Well, then the business will be worth at least $75,000. So, you know, they want to make sure that you're basically financially secure. They don't want to give a dealer's license to somebody that's got a $100,000 in credit card debt and, and rents a little $100 a month apartment or something like that. So we are required to be worth at least $75,000. The business is required to be worth $75,000. Now, you're not going to submit proof of this unless the BMV requests like a financial disclosure statement. Let's say, for example, uh, the BMV has heard that you declared bankruptcy or something like that. Well, then they may sub require you to submit a financial disclosure statement. But if not, we are going to check whether or not the business is worth $75,000 on the application here in a little bit. And that application needs to be true. So when you're computing net worth, you will total all of your assets, the worth of everything you own, and subtract your debt. And that will equal your net worth. So uh, state law does require that you maintain a net worth of $75,000 or more during your licensure period. We're also going to need to obtain a vendor's license, okay? In unit four of the section of unit four of this course here in just a little bit, I'm going to show you uh, an entire deal. So we're going to go extensively from the buy to the sell. Part of that extensive process of a deal will include the collection of sales tax on the motor vehicles that you're selling. So 
In order to legally collect sales tax on the vehicles you're selling, you're going to have to obtain what's known as an Ohio vendor's license. So I'm going to show you how to do that really easily online. If you're not comfortable getting it online, you can just go into your county courthouse and go into the auditor's office. You can pay them 25 bucks on a spot and they'll give you a vendor's license. But I'm going to show you how in just a little while we're going to jump onto the Ohio Business Gateway and I'll show you how to easily get your vendor license number. And that will legally allow you to charge sales tax. And we'll cover that extensively here uh, in just a little while. The Secretary of State in Ohio wants to know every single business that's operating within the state, including this dealership that you are getting ready to open. So even though the Secretary of State is obviously the leading election authority in the state, they also want a record of every business that's operating in the state, including this dealership that you're getting ready to open. So we're gonna to need to register our business with the Secretary of State. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But when we do register with the Secretary of State, we will need to decide on our business entity. So when you're starting your dealership, you're basically starting it as either a sole proprietor, a partnership, uh, maybe a limited liability partnership or corporation, or possibly a limited liability company, which is referred to as an LLC. So you could certainly get some legal advice before you decide what your business entity will be. But I wanna give you this phone number a couple more times during the course here. And this is the Secretary of State Corporations Division. And that phone number is 614-466-2655. Once again, at 614-466-2655. The Secretary of State Corporations Division is just an encyclopedia of business knowledge for you. So, you know, they might be able to steer you in the right direction on how you should structure your business entity, or if you're asking a lot of really technical questions, uh, they might tell you to get some legal advice. But we're gonna jump onto the Secretary of State's website here in just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how you can easily register your business entity with just a few clicks of the mouse. We'll delve into that. We've got a whole section on that later on. I-9 employment eligibility. Everyone, the state of Ohio is complying with a federal law that requires each person whose name appears on a dealer's license to in fact be eligible to work in the US. So you will need to complete what is known as an I-9 employment eligibility form. You're gonna complete this for every person whose name appears on the dealer's license. And you're gonna to need to also fill this out for each employee that you hire later on. And you can easily download that form at uscis.gov. Now, this form does not have to be submitted with your dealer license application. You do not submit this form with your dealer license application, but you will be required to store this form in your record. So it is part of your records requirement, and it'll be on our records list that we go on later on. So uh, make sure that you fill out the I-9 employment eligibility form for each person whose name appears on your dealer's license and for each salesperson or employee that you hire later on. You don't submit this form, but it is part of your records. Your federal employment identification number or your EIN, you know, I'm gonna make a pretty confident prediction here. You know, I think when you obtain your dealer's license, there's an excellent chance that you're gonna see an increase in your income in the next year. In fact, some of us will see a dramatic increase of our income because this can be a very lucrative business that you're getting ready to start here. And with that income, I guarantee you, Uncle Sam's gonna want a little bit of it. Okay, so Uncle, Uncle Sam's gonna want a piece of that income action. So what we're gonna need to do, we need to apply for a federal employment identification number. And I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do here in just a little bit. This is a number that the federal government is going to tack onto your dealership. You are going to use this when you're filing your income taxes every year, and it also has to be on your dealer license application. So I'm gonna show you how to get that here in a little bit. We're gonna jump right on to the website, the IRS website. I'll show you how to do that online. I'll also give you a phone number if you wanna just call it in, but it's just a few clicks of the mouse. We're gonna to have to get a federal employment identification number, and I'll show you how easy that is to do, and you'll actually enter that number onto your dealer license application. So we'll cover that here in just a little bit. Your dealer course that you're taking right now has been a law for several years. Most states in the United States do require a person take a mandatory dealer educational class or a course before you're actually allowed to get 
the dealer's license. So it's kind of like, you know, if you want to get a real estate license, that can be very profitable and states require you take training before you can get your real estate license. If you want to get an insurance license, that can be very profitable. You have to take training before you can get an insurance license. You want to get a dealer's license? It can be extremely profitable. And the state does require that you take training before you can get your dealer's license. So one of the great things about our training, we do have one of the shortest courses in the country. You have to take the six hour training course and you will be required to watch this entire course uh, to make sure that you have completed the course. Now, I want you to be aware on the day that you complete the course, that's going to be the date that is entered on your official certificate of completion. And that is good for exactly six months from the day that you finish the course. So you have to complete all these steps and submit all the paperwork within six months of the day that you finish this dealer training course. If for some reason you waited one day after that to submit your paperwork, state law will require that you take the dealer training course again. OK, so you will need to make sure that at the, on the last day of the course, make sure that you submit all of your paperwork to the state because you do have to submit your certificate of completion within six months of the day that you finish the dealer training course. The state has no continuing education, so you don't have to take classes every year or every other year like many other states do require. But the one requirement is that you submit your application and all of your paperwork to the state within six months of the day that you finish your training course. So everyone, I want to encourage you. I think you're really going to be glad that you're starting this new business. So get these steps, steps taken care of. Get this paperwork to the state so you can get your dealer's license back as soon as possible so you can open your business as soon as possible and hopefully start making some money as soon as possible. So we're going to submit all of this paperwork to the state. When you've completed the initial application steps, you're going to need to enclose all of that paperwork into a large envelope, which we refer to as the dealer application packet. Be sure to include your completed dealer application form BMV 4320, dealer education certificate of completion that you're going to download at the end of the course, photographs if they're not being emailed, a copy of your dealer surety bond. Remember, the original dealer surety bond goes to the attorney general's office. Copies of any corporation documents, if applicable, and a check or money order for all dealer license fees. It can take up to six weeks to process your dealer license application. If you're missing any documents, your dealer application process can take much longer. When you are officially issued your dealer license or what is officially known as your dealer permit, you will receive a welcome email with instructions from the BMV on how to establish your online account in the DLR system, which we call the dealer portal. And the DLR system is covered in detail later on in the course. Now, I want you to be aware, in the past, the state would mail you your dealer permit, but they no longer do that. They're going to send you an email. You're going to jump onto this DLR system, which I'll show you how to use here in a little bit. And then you're going to be able to download your dealer permit. Once you've established your online account, the first thing that will show on the dashboard is a link to a PDF for your dealer permit. You must print off your permit and post it in a conspicuous place. Once that permit is printed, you will be taken to your full dashboard. And at that time, you can print up temporary tags, uh, other applications and things like that. And that's also where you can print off temporary dealer plates if needed. And you'll only be given half the total number of the plates that are actually requested. So if you need more information on that, I believe that's at the bottom of page eight on that dealer manual that you ordered at the beginning of the course that you downloaded at the beginning of the course. And I always want to give you that reminder. If you need to download your dealer manual, it's just click on that files button up there at the very top of the page and you can easily download that manual. So once, once more, as a reminder, the BMV, when they approve your dealer's license, they will not mail it to you. They will send you an email. You're going to need to jump onto the DLR system, which is called the dealer portal, and easily download your dealer permit. And we're going to cover the process of logging on to the DLR system in greater detail later on in your dealer course. And once you have that license, the very first thing that you want to do is display that license prominently. OK, so you are required to display that license and you will be a licensed motor vehicle dealer at that time. So you're probably going to be using that dealer 
license to go into dealer auctions. And you know, you can use your dealer license in Ohio and go into any dealer auction in the United States. So you may be traveling the country buying vehicles to sell on your lot here in Ohio. Now, at this time, we're going to be on our lot. We're going to be buying and selling vehicles and running our business. And very shortly after you receive your license, you're going to get a call from a BNV investigator and they're going to come out and do your official lot inspection. Okay, they're going to do your official lot inspection. So how this is going to play out, the BNV investigator is going to make an appointment with you and they're going to come out and they're going to make sure that you have the sign with your entire registered business name posted on the building. They'll probably measure the letters to make sure that the letters are at least six inches high. They're going to make sure that you have your hours posted and your phone number posted. And then they're going to come into your office. They're going to make sure that you have at least one desk, at least three chairs, at least one filing cabinet. They're also going to probably measure your office. They may have a little measuring wheel to make sure your office has at least 180 square feet. They're going to make sure you have adequate lighting and electrical service in your office, along with permanent heating and ventilation. And they're also going to make sure that your business and your lot have that physical separation you know, from any other business or any other business's customer parking. So that's going to be your lot inspection. It'll take just a few minutes and you want to have a great relationship with your BNV investigator. They want you to run a good compliant business. And if you have any questions, they're going to be a wealth of information. Now, I do also want you to be aware that let's say there's a mistake. Something wasn't quite right during this license uh, lot inspection. And so let's just say, for example, accidentally, the dealership letters on your sign were only five inches instead of at least six inches. Well, the BMV is not going to shut you down. Okay, the BMV investigator is going to tell you exactly what you need to do, and you'll need to go out and get a new sign and get the you know make sure the dealership letters are at least six inches high or larger, and they'll come out within 15 days you know to do a follow up. But you want to ensure that you've met all the requirements on the first time, so that BMV investigator only has to come out the one time to do that lot inspection. Okay, so do please keep that in mind. And once again, I really want to reiterate, and I'm going to say this several times during the course, your dealer license must be displayed prominently, okay? And, and you're going to work really hard to get that license. You're going to be proud of that license when you get that license. So you don't want to stick it in some desk drawer or some vault or a filing cabinet. State law does require that your dealer license is displayed prominently. So make sure and frame it. You're going to work hard for it. Be proud of it. Put it on the wall. It must be displayed prominently. And dealer licenses expire the last day of March every two years. So you want to make sure and do your renewal before January 31st uh, of the year before the license expires. So do keep, please keep in mind, you meet all those requirements and then you will be a licensed Ohio used motor vehicle dealer.